Hey, Faith family, it's Brother Mario. I pray you guys are having a great day. I know many of you are going to comment and say, Mario, <laughs> you keep saying it's going to be your last video. I promise this will be my last video. In this one, I'm going to give out my full confession before I go to rehab. Um, now, I had to pray for a lot of courage to make this video. It's not going to be an easy one for me. I'm going to try and keep it together. But I'm about to confess some uh, pretty uh, shameful disgusting things about myself, uh, but I need to do this so that I can get better. Um, all sorts of people are on the internet now exposing me. And by the way, thank you guys. Uh, I just want to let you know God has used you to help me get the help that I need in my life. I love even people who put, position themselves as my enemies. I love you and I just want you to know I completely forgive you and God worked all this out for my good. I'm going to get the help and treatment I need and uh, he used many of you guys to do that. But, um, you know, you guys are a little vicious in the way that you make videos about me. So I figured, hey, I'm just going to expose myself here and lay it all out. So as you guys uh, probably know, if you watch my recent video, I'm on uh, a waiting list to go to a uh, Christian rehab uh, here in the capital in Ottawa in Canada. Uh, I placed myself on there because of uh, crippling addiction. Um, I can't overcome this and I've just recently come out of denial. I had many years where, you know, when I first got saved, I got sober for like eight months and I thought I was, I was good. I'm, I'm no longer an addict. And then I fell back into it for a month or two and uh, I wouldn't make videos or anything. I don't know if you guys remember, I would always disappear for a couple weeks or a month or so. Well, that's, that's why. So I would relapse, I would fall into it and I'd be like, what's going on? How did I get into this? and um, try to get out, pray to God, and I would get out. You know, God, by his grace, would allow me to recover and get sober again. And so then I would have several more months where I had this mindset, well, I'm not an addict, I've overcome this. And then I'd fall back into it. And then I'd overcome it. And then, and then that time I overcome it. I'm like, this has to be the last time. I'm for sure healed this time. And so I would just continue. But this has been going on and on and on, and it doesn't stop. So recently I've admit that I need help. I'm an addict and um, I need rehab. Um, oh, this is so hard. <laughs> All right, come on, Mara. Um, I just wanna also touch on the point that uh, one of the reasons I think I'm struggling so hard with drug and uh, sexual addictions is because of, in my past, I used uh, drugs uh, spiritually, you know, a lot of people use them recreationally. I actually used to use them in a new age practice like a shaman. So I opened myself up with drug use. Uh, I opened up doors and things that shouldn't be opened up. And in sex, I was, uh, in, uh, I was a yoga instructor. So I was really drawn to Tantra, which is sex yoga. And again, that is opening yourself up spiritually to so many things. And I think that, um, the, the wound in my heart, which I'll discuss, is the root of my addiction, plus opening up all these doors and the traumas that I've had in my life have created the situation that I'm in right now. And that's why I need to go to rehab for nine months and be rehabilitated and healed and treated and helped. Because it's, uh, it, it's, it's heavy. So here it is. <clears throat> you guys know I've been struggling with marijuana. Uh, I've talked about alcohol. Alcohol is maybe a bigger problem than I had first realized. Um, porn, masturbation. But the one that I, uh, I, I, I've had trouble to confess is cocaine. Told you it's not gonna be easy. <sighs> so in those times of relapse, sometimes I would get cocaine and this use got worse and worse to the point that it is now. It's not a daily habit, but when I binge, I can binge for a little while. And um... It's a problem and I need help.
I've been living a double life as a hypocrite. <laughs> This is not who I want to be in my heart. But because I did not get my addiction treated, um, these things started to continue to get worse and worse. Um, God showed me that the reason I'm an addict is because of a wound in my heart. I'll discuss that more, I'm sure, when I come back and share with you my recovery testimony. But there's a massive wound in my heart. And what I'm doing is I am seeking to, to, to self-medicate myself. And so instead of going to God to heal and mend that wound, that deep inner wound that comes from my childhood, um, I'm going to substances, to sex, to women to give me gratification, to give me, I'm going to things to get what only God can give me and I'm tired of it. And I don't know why I do it, I'm stupid. I know there's no fulfillment in those things. But yet I like a stupid dog going to eat its vomit. I go back to it. So because the wound wasn't healed in my heart, imagine you cut yourself. It gets infected. That's what my, my wound has been getting. So my, my addictions, every time I've been relapsing, they were getting worse and worse. And another factor that made things really, really bad is uh, the YouTube money. Um, I made uh, half a million dollars in five years off my YouTube channel. And that money, because I was an addict, because I was not treated, some of it got used. A lot of it got used for shit. I don't have anything to show for it today. I owe the government and I'm going bankrupt. I've never made money like that. I never did. I was making fifteen to seventeen thousand dollars a month sometimes. I had money now to fuel addictions that I never had before. And I was living in shame and guilt and living a double life and hating myself all the, the while. So my sex addiction also continued to get worse because it, it was left untreated, as any untreated disease or illness or wound will. And, um, you know, part of my wound is that I, I, I'm, I'm seeking, I, I, need, I need to, <laughs> <you> know, <laughs> it comes from my dad. And dad, I love you. I don't know if you're watching this. I don't blame you for this at all. I know your mom hurt you. And uh, you have your own wound to heal from. But uh, you hurt me in a way that I never felt good enough. And I've always been seeking validation from people and things. And so uh, in high school, we didn't uh, have, like, I, I'm uh, 33. So back when I was in high school, we still had the non-smartphones. The I don't know if you guys remember the Nokias. But... Um, there was no such thing as sexting, but that came later. And uh, once I started to get into that and started to receive this validation coming back from the photos, <laughs> I'm sorry, this is gross and there's a lot of shame. I'm gonna try and get through this, but I need therapy. Like, I don't know if you can tell I'm broken to the end here. This stuff breaks you. So don't get caught up in this garbage, trust me. Run, kids, run. Run from this, because this is what happens. Just emptiness and brokenness and being lost. So I would start receiving validation from the messages. And, uh, and this would temporarily fill that void in my heart. And, uh, oh, okay, this is not going to be easy. I've also been a love and relationship addict. I don't know if you guys understand what that is, but basically because there's a wound in my heart, because I'm not healed, I'm seeking through a relationship, love, sex, to give me a sense of um, validation, comfort, intimacy that only God can provide. 
and uh, my sex addictions got worse and worse and progressed continuously worse and worse. Mm. What started off as sexting and camming, oh man, okay, here it is. I've called escorts. I... <laughs> I've gotten so lonely and needed companionship so bad. I've called an escort. And so there it is, there's everything. You wanted to see the Vigilant Christian exposed, there he is. Disgusting, eh? I know, I know. God is a God of grace and mercy. This weekend, I'm five days sober, praise God. And one day at a time. I'm going to uh, AA meetings and I'm meeting up with pastor and I'm trying to stay in community and uh, I'm on my way to uh, a Christian rehabilitation home for nine months so they can uh, help me. I'm so broken. <laughs> Oh, so this weekend I went to a men's conference and um, there was a speaker there that spoke. It was the Band of Brothers men's conference and just awesome. I'm so happy God's placing this recovery team, this Christian ministry that specializes in addiction in my life and I'm very thankful he's placing these men in my life right now because I need restoration and this is the restoration it's through his church and through his people and through ministries like the one I'm going to be attending at rehab there was a band of brothers conference and one of the speakers Jim went up and he shared his testimony about how um, he had once made a decision to follow Jesus but not a commitment and uh, his walk with God was marked with lukewarmness and difficulty and not truly living an empowered life as Christ would call us to. And God brought him to a place where he, uh, he had him not only decide to follow, but commit to it, to submit, to surrender, to yield, all that. And uh, Saturday, April 6th, God used that testimony the Holy Spirit spoke to me and said, Mario, and he did an altar call after for men who wanted to recommit themselves to the Lord. And I went up weeping with tears. And the Lord spoke to me and said, by his spirit in my heart, Mario, you're going to get another chance to do this because I'm a merciful God. I don't care about your sin. I have died for it. I'm a God of mercy and grace and you're my son and I love you but I need you to commit to sobriety. Not only me, but being sober. Sobriety has to be the most important thing in your life moving forward with me. So I recommitted my life to Jesus Christ five days ago. It doesn't mean I'm going to be perfect by that, but that is where my heart's intent is, and I'm on my way to rehabilitation, and I'm trying to stay sober every single day on the way there. I'm very excited to go to Jericho. It's um, in the Bible, by the way. Jericho is where the walls fell down. And these are walls in my life I haven't been able to tear down. And I think now through this, God is finally going to tear down my walls <laughs> and allow me into the promised land. I've been wandering in the desert and I need those Jericho walls to fall. And I'm going to Jericho Road <laughs> to get them to fall in Jesus name. 
and I'm going to come back and tell all you addicts about how Jesus can set you free, because if he can do it for me, he can do it for you. I'm one of the worst depraved, sick human beings. I knew Jesus Christ. I knew the truth. And I still was caught in that filth. There is no greater sinner than that. I believe that's worse than murder. I know Jesus. So if God can have mercy and grace on me, he can have mercy on you. Oh, trust me, he can. My, I need, you know, it's either, there, there's two, there's two options. I die, this stuff's going to kill me, or I go to Jericho and I die to self. And I allow God to make me new. Then that's what I'm going to do. It's been getting too bad. Recently, I've been, on, when I do relapse and I binge, I go to the point of blackout. I don't even remember what I do. I wake up the next morning and I look on my phone at the garbage that I sent out. And I don't even remember doing it. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, the shame, I'm telling you. There's so much shame in this garbage. <sighs> Come on, full confession. What haven't I confessed? You know, one thing that was happening too is um, I was getting hypersexuality induced by drugs and alcohol. Uh, if you don't know what that means, hypersexuality is when you're, you're considering sexual things that you normally wouldn't. And when I would drink and get drunk and, and do cocaine, smoke weed, that's what would happen. And... Um, Yes, I've had homosexual thoughts and temptation. Oh. I've never engaged in it. I've only, it's, a, it's a stupid fantasy that I'm going to crucify, and it is not me. And the enemy is trying to lead me and, and, and pervert my mind and disrupt me so that I end up there. But I'm putting an end to it now, and I'm going to get a hold of my mind and my sexuality. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to become pure and allow God because pornography ch uh, changes your brain by the way it, it perverts and twists and manipulates and gets you more and more as you expose yourself it, the damage continues and who knows where it's going to end I've sent inappropriate photos to women on Instagram I'm just a piece of garbage. I'm just a sinner. Who did get saved by grace in January of 2010, but did not truly submit and yield to the Lord until this weekend. Mm. Because I had not come to terms with the fact that I was an addict and that I needed help. So there you go. All right. Whew. Actually, I feel a little better. <laughs> it's all out there. There it is. If you want to unsubscribe and unfollow me and hate me, and you have all the right. I'm sorry for all of you who sent me money and I spent it on Phil. I'm sorry. I'm really sorry. Please forgive me. Everyone, please forgive me. I'm a broken sinner at the feet of the cross, weeping for mercy. <laughs> if you want to kick me when I'm down, you can go ahead. I'd understand. But there you have it. Full confession. I'm on my way to rehab. I'm going to get some help from Christians. It's a Christian ministry. They're going to help with all of this. And uh, I'm going to come out a new man. One, one of the guys uh, that goes to the program came to the conference this weekend and uh, he's graduating in 10 days and he, he told me, Mario, I'm a new person and it gave me hope. I see all these guys in that home and they're being made new and I, I, I'm excited.
Because this is gross. This is sick. This isn't me. <sighs> if you're stuck being who deep down you know you're not, please seek God and get help. Keep me in prayer, Faith Fam. I love you and I'm so sorry for letting you all down.